A quadratic function is, a, x squared, plus b x, plus c, where a is not 0. The highest power of x is 2. Let's take a look at graphs of different quadratic functions. The simplest quadratic function is, y equals x squared. Let's find some points first. We have x values as, minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 0 1 2 3. Their y values are 9 4 1 0 1 4 9. Let's plot those points on the coordinate system, connect them with a smooth curve, and we get this graph. The graph is called parabola. All quadratic functions graphs are called parabola, and similar to this shape. We will see later how they can look different based on different values of a, b, and c. Since x squared is greater than or equal to 0, the entire graph is above the x-axis. It's symmetric and the line of symmetry is the y-axis, or x equals 0. And there's a vertex, 0, 0. It's the lowest point of the parabola. Now let's see the graphs of y equals x squared plus q, and how we can transform the graph of y equals x squared to it. We already know the graph of y equals x squared. Now let's look at y equals x squared plus 3. Let's find the y values of the same x values. Each value is larger by 3 now. They are 12 7 4 3 4 7 12. Put all points on the graph, we get this graph. We can see that it's actually y equals x squared, moved up along the y axis by 3 units. The line of symmetry is still x equals 0. And the vertex becomes 0, 3. Now let's look at y equals x squared minus 3. Compared with y equals x squared, each y value is smaller by 3 now. They are 6 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 2 1 6. Put all points on the graph, we get this graph. We can see that it's actually y equals x squared, moved down along the y axis by 3 units. The line of symmetry is still x equals 0. And the vertex becomes 0, minus 3. Therefore, for y equals x squared plus q, it's the graph of y equals x squared, moved along the y axis by q units. If q is positive, the graph moves up. If q is negative, the graph moves down. Now let's see how we can move y equals x squared to make y equals x plus p squared. First, let's look at y equals x plus 3 squared. This is a complete square and minus 3 makes it 0. Therefore, we find values around minus 3. x values are minus 6 minus 5 minus 4 minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 0. y values are 9 4 1 0 1 4 9. So we get this curve. We can see that it's y equals x squared, moved left along the x-axis by 3. The line of symmetry becomes x equals minus 3. And the vertex is minus 3, 0. Next, let's look at y equals x minus 3 squared. This is a complete square and 3 makes it 0. Therefore, we find values around 3. X values are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Y values are 9, 4, 1, 0, 1, 4, 9. So we get this curve. We can see that it's Y equals X squared, moved right along the X axis by 3. The line of symmetry becomes X equals 3. And the vertex is 3, 0. So for Y equals X plus P squared, it is y equals x squared moved along the x-axis by p units. If p is positive, it's moved to the left. If p is negative, it's moved to the right. Now let's look at y equals a, x squared, when a is positive. First, y equals 2x squared. We know it's still centered around 0. So x values remain the same. However, y values are twice as much now. They are 18 8 2 0 2 8 18. Therefore, for the same x value, this curve has a higher value. Therefore, it becomes this. It is stretched along the y axis by a factor of 2, and becomes thinner. 
The line of symmetry is still the y-axis. And the vertex is still the origin. Next let's look at half x squared. The x values are still the same. The y values are half as much now. Therefore, for the same x value, this curve has a lower value. So, the graph becomes this. It is compressed along the y-axis and becomes wider. We say it is stretched along the y-axis by a factor of half. The line of symmetry is still the y-axis. The vertex is still the origin. So for y equals ax squared, the graph is stretched along the y-axis by a factor of a. If a is greater than 1, it is stretched along the y-axis and becomes thinner. If a is between 0 and 1, it is actually compressed along the y-axis and becomes wider. Now let's look at y equals minus x squared. We can see that x values are still the same, but all y values are opposite the values of y equals x squared. Therefore we get a curve like this. It's a reflection of y equals x squared in the x-axis. The line of symmetry is still the y-axis. The vertex is still the origin. However, it's the highest point now. In y equals x squared, it is the lowest point. In general, if a is positive, the parabola opens upwards. If a is negative, the parabola opens downwards. Now that we know all transformations, let's put them together and look at the graph of y equals a, times x plus p squared, plus q. y equals 2 times x plus 3 squared plus 4. Let's see how we can transform the graph of y equals x squared to it. First, x plus 3 squared. This is move along the x-axis to the left, by 3 units. Second, 2 times x plus 3 squared. This is stretched along the y-axis by a factor of 2. Third, 2 times x plus 3 squared plus 4. This is move up along the y-axis by 4 units. After these three transformations, we get the final graph of this function. The parabola opens upwards, because a is 2, which is positive. The line of symmetry is x equals minus 3. The vertex is minus 3, 4. It is the lowest point. The minimum y value is 4, when x is minus 3. If we make a minus 2, then everything is the same, but one more step. That is to make the graph reflected by the x-axis. Here is the final graph of the function. Properties are also the same. However, the vertex is the highest point now. Hence there's a maximum y value of 4, when x is minus 3. Now we know how to transform the graph of y equals x squared, to the graph of y equals a, x plus p squared plus q. p determines the move along the x-axis. It moves to the left if p is positive, and to the right if p is negative. Q determines the move along the y-axis. It moves up if Q is positive, and down if Q is negative. These two factors determine the line of symmetry and the vertex. A sign determines the direction the parabola opens. If A is positive, it opens upwards. If A is negative, it opens downwards. It determines if the function has a minimum value or a maximum value. A modulus is the absolute value of A. It doesn't include the sign. For example, if a is minus 2, its modulus is 2. It is stretched along the y-axis by a factor of a's modulus. It's a combination of these four transformations. The order doesn't matter. The line of symmetry is x equals minus p. The vertex is minus p, q. The parabola opens upwards if a is positive, and there's a minimum y value. Q, when x is minus p. The parabola opens downwards if a is negative, and there's a maximum y value. Q, when x is minus p. In this class, we learned. Quadratic function is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. The graph is called parabola. For y equals a, x plus p squared plus q, the line of symmetry is x equals minus p. 
the vertex is minus p, q, if a is positive, the parabola opens upwards and there's a minimum y value q. If a is negative, the parabola opens downwards and there's a maximum y value q. It is stretched along the y-axis by a factor of a's modulus from y equals x squared. 